Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts in all data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding the number of users that are eligible for discount and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is easy. Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called Purchases with three different columns, right? User ID, timestamp, and amount. And one thing I would like to mention here is like once you open this question in the code so this much code is already there right so i have not written this so like once you open it it is all already going to populate right okay so the user id and the timestamp columns combined is the primary key for this table each row contains information about the purchase time and the amount paid for the user with id user id okay a user is eligible for a discount if they had a purchase in the inclusive interval of time, start date and end date with at least minimum amount amount. To convert the dates to times, both dates should be considered as the start of the day. Right. So the, when they say end date of 5th of March 2022, it's basically 5th of March 2022 at 12 a.m. basically. Right. We are asked to write a SQL query to report the number of users that are eligible for a discount. Okay, so let's go through this example, right? So here you have different users like their timestamp and the their purchases, right? The start date here is 8th of March and end date is 20th of March, right? So basically start date is 8th of March 2022, 0, 0, 0, right? So start of the day and then end date is again this date and 0, colon zero colon zero right uh, and the minimum amount is thousand units now so basically which all users have at least bought something of this much worth and the timestamp is between this right so if you look at user id one right so user id one is 20th of april right so outside this range for user id 2 19th of march 2022 this date basically is after this and before this right but the amount is 678 which is less than the minimum amount right so this is also not included so user id 1 and 2 not included let's move to user id 3 so two different purchases 33 is already out of this range so this is also not included however 18th of march right so this date is included as well as the amount is more than the minimum amount so how many users within the start and end dates and with a minimum amount of 1000 are present one so that is the output right now here if you look at it the question does not say about start date or end date right so what is the start date what is the end date that is why this question you need to solve it by creating a function so that the test cases that are generated for this right they can call the function with different start end dates and minimum amount and check whether your query returns that or not right so that is why we are using a function here and you need to write your code within this so a function in mysql is just like any other function that you use in any other programming language so basically uh, when let's say let's take python right so so when you create a function in python you give its name then you give give some parameters right here you need to also give the name of the parameter as well as the data type right and then here uh, in mysql you need to also return like what kind of data type this function is going to return and then you begin and end and within this body part you write something and like since here you only need to return a specific value right so you write a return and here you need to basically apply the logic that you are thinking about it let's forget everything that we have here right so basically let's say you are given two variables which has values of start date and end date and another variable a third variable which has a minimum amount right so now basically what do you need to do is from this table called purchases you need to firstly limit that the timestamp should be between your start date and the end date and your amount should be greater than or equal to this minimum amount part right now so what i'm saying is we need to write from this table called purchases right you need to keep only those rows where your timestamp is between 
right now in case this question said that okay this is the start date this is the end date so you will write the specific start and end date here right but here it does not say anything so that is where this functions and the parameters come into picture so you have two variables which are going to hold values of start date and end date so you write timestamp between start date and end date right and what is the other condition that your amount should be at least greater than or equal to the minimum amount so we write amount greater than equal to minimum amount so once you have this then what do you need to do basically you need to count the number of distinct user ids right so that is going to give you the number of users that are eligible for discount right so we return return count of distinct user ids right and what is the alias of the final output user count right so we write as user count okay so yeah this looks good uh one thing here is if you try to run this it will throw you a runtime error maybe because of uh you know there is no calling of this function so we are just creating a function right but yeah if i go ahead and submit it it will pass all the test cases so yeah it was accepted right it passed all the test cases and this is how we do it again yeah it is somewhat a different than what we have been doing but you don't need to worry about it the only reason we have to do this by function is because you don't know anything about the start date and end date and different test cases might have different values of start date end date and minimum amount so that is why we are doing this in the form of a variable and that is why we are creating a function so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video